What's up, y'all? It's TTT, aka the Thunder Conductor, and we are back for another YouTube video and Twitch stream. I want to say thank you all for being such an amazing audience. And if you're on YouTube, you know what we do like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And if you're on Twitch, follow and ring the bell. We do this once a week on Sunday or Saturday on Twitch, and we do this twice a week on Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. So, with that being said, I got a question for y'all. What is your favorite two color commander pairing for both CDH and EDH? If you're on YouTube, drop it down in the comments. If you're on Twitch, come on, comment it real quick. My personal favorite is Is It. But we're not here to talk about Is It. We're here to talk about Demir, okay? And to bring that, to bring this Demir, I want to specifically talk about Garuda Doom of Depths. And actually, I'm I'm treating you all the day. I have an amazing guest with us, Mr. Nybar, the fringe enthusiast, sometimes go Ruta guy. Come on in, brother. You with us? Yeah. How's it going? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Getting ready to talk about Garuda. <laughs> Let's get it. I love it. I love it. Man, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, how did you get into CDH? How did you get into Garuda? Talk to me, man. Yeah, so CDH, uh, I got into it about two years ago. I was a casual player for about three years prior, but mm -hmm. my uh, my brother, who some people might know as Dante MTG, Timna mm -hmm. Kodama player, he uh, he got me into CDH, and mm -hmm. so I started building some decks, uh, all fringe. I don't think I've played a single good deck <laughs> by anyone's standard, and uh, landed on Gairuda, uh, I want to say just under a year ago. I think it was May last year. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And you've actually pretty much done very well with this deck. Like, not to, to toot the horn up too much, if I can say so. You have top four, or have you won tournaments? Get talk, let's talk about this pedigree. Like, what makes you the Garuda guy? Talk to me. <laughs> yeah, as far as uh, Garuda pedigree, I don't know of any other Garuda players that's, that made top 16s in tournaments um my first tournament ever i played with it actually was just a little in-house 20 25 player uh, webcam tournament yeah over discord and spell table and uh top four that okay and then I took it to the, yeah and then i took it to the the mox masters i think in either may or june i got very close to top 16 i think i was uh like 24th mm. um and i was as a first run with that deck like in a major tournament that was a pretty cool experience yeah, um, yeah but it yeah. took a while for it to get like an actual result i meant mm -hmm. to um the invite the mox masters invitational in october oh and, congratulations uh, yeah thank you um see so yeah, i qualified for that um i went ahead and played in their um last chance qualifier i didn't need to um <laughs> but i just wanted to get some practice in before the main event and uh, top 16 their last chance qualifier yeah um with the deck um oh, beautiful. and then played in the invitational i almost made it to the top 16 in the invitational i was on my fifth round and i had to win it to get in mm -hmm. and uh, they put me against comedian freedom <laughs> waffle <laughs> No! And and Max, uh, the the judge Max, and it was a hard pod to win. Oh, um, I Freedom am, Waffle took that game. I I believe it. Yeah, no, you. I would say I'm sorry that you were in that pod. If not, you probably gained some amazing experiences from that from that game, bro. You probably leveled up more losing that game than if you would have won getting playing against some scrubs. Granted, it's an invitational worthy, and there probably weren't too many scrubs there, but. Man. Yeah, it was all good players, all great players. Yeah. Um, and then I finally got my like real big um, uh, top sixteen. I think it was uh, the chaos in December. I yeah. Mean, I top sixteen that event with Garuda. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing some results with it, which has been nice. That's good. Well, I just want to say I'm excited to get into this deck tech. Like I kid you not, this is a deck that I really was interested in, but was humbly was very i'm humble to say that there are some intricacies that i know i don't understand about this but before we get into this full deck tech i want to say if you are looking for more ways more ways to support the channel first of all we have our thunder conductor community check check it out on patreon you can join the discord for free but if you want to get deeper access to the discord into more uh internal conversations with me pick up games with me getting to beat people like nybar and other people in our community and also shout outs shout out to our new patreon subscriber uh 
full please feel free link at the bow also if you're looking for another way to say hey i don't want a full subscription i just want to say one time for the fun time i want to support you t and i love what you do go ahead and buy me a coffee link in the bio it keeps me up and it keeps the lights on so with that said let's dive right into it garuda doom of deaths it's a companion so you put this in your command your companion zone right is that how this works is it <laughs> no just put that right in the command zone okay no companion shenanigans here okay all right so talk to me Let, let's break this down it costs four and two demir all right so we can get this out with three mana and a jewel lotus it is a six six kind of big and it says when garuda enters the battlefield each player mills four cards put a creature card with an even mana value from among the milled cards onto the battlefield under your control and cool thing about this this actually is any any player because everybody's milling for and you're choosing from the mill card so what when you see this what does this really tell you and why should people mess with this talk to me um so yeah i um i guess i should start i i saw a list um when i started this a year ago i saw a list um someone had posted on discord channel and it was kind of um it kind of looked like a Kennen big flip deck it had like the kozilek and like all the big scary creatures in it yeah and I, I look at the I looked at that and I was like, you know, Big Flip sounds pretty fun. Kenan was a pretty fun deck. Yeah. And so I I kind of toned down on the big creatures a little bit. I did try it out with um, like uh, Jen Cataxius Core Augur. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Razaketh and some of the bigger stuff. And as I played the list more and more, um, I really honed in on the clone synergies. Um and yeah basically just honed in on the clones and gotcha. the specific big creatures that i could combo with like tide spell tyrant mm, i hear you i hear you i hear you mm -hmm. and i'm seeing of course we're not running horror breaker hole breaker horror because it's odd cause unfortunately which Correct. sucks a little bit but well, look tide spout is the og and it's still working i think kenan still runs some can list still run the tide spout if i remember oh. correctly Oh yes, they do, and I love ripping tide spouts right off the top of their decks. <laughs> I, I love never that. get scared. Yeah, I never get scared when I see a cannon because I know I'm gonna get something good from them. <laughs> I definitely feel you there, because uh, or what what uh, usual good hits are you getting off cannon? You're getting tide spout, tyrant. What else? Uh, any of the number of clones that they run, phantasmal image, uh, metamorph. A lot of them Ooh. are on flesh to look at now too. Yeah. And that's perfect because at that point you take their clone effect and I'm guessing we just continue the chain where you'll get another ET by B by cloning your own commander, if that's correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, I When I first uh, started honing on the clones energies, it was all about turboing out Kairuta and getting kind of like that clone chain going. Mm. Um, but I've kind of changed my stance on the play style of the deck a little bit as hmm. I've played it throughout the year um the deck has a lot more flexibility because of the clones than just trying to turbo out the commander and in fact a lot of people are kind of scared of the commander now and they'll red blast it mana drain it oh one billion it. percent it, it is a scary yeah. deck <laughs> yeah so, I mean, but when um, you're in go ahead brother yeah i cut you off brother oh no worries uh yeah i was just gonna say a lot of the times i hold back on playing that garuda now and i try to accrue value try to get the draw engines out and yeah. uh Everyone's playing their own draw engines, you know, Timnas, Kroms, um, you got really good value engines like Kennen out there, so you can clone those and get value before you land the Garuda. Mm, I hear you, I hear you. And so basically we've pivoted from Turbo, Garuda more to let's get a Ristic study or a Mystic Remora or the beautiful One Ring out and mm -hmm. just start accruing value. And then by the time we get, we're wanting to push Garuda out, we can have one to two counter spells and or may possibly a silence effect if we can clone somebody else's uh, Grand Abolisher or, or whatever not just to start chaining off from clones, if I'm hearing that right. Exactly, yeah. I wanna make sure I have the protection before I really go for it. Definitely, I hear it. And I'm basically, what I'm hearing also from you is that Garuda is pretty much like, by the time we see you cast Garuda, like I am trying to win the game if it depending on what my flips hit basically pretty much yeah i love that okay well then okay if we talking about you trying to win the game how do you win the game like let's talk about win cons come on 
Well, it's in Demir, so I have uh, the Tan Pact, Thassa's Oracle in the deck, right? All day, every day. Um, I've probably won that way maybe a handful of times. It's not the most common way, surprisingly. Um, I also don't run uh, Demonic Consultation in the deck. I, it tends would... to be... Yep. Yeah, it tends to be a dead card, and I don't... It's also just a personal philosophy sort of thing. Yeah. I don't like playing the deck. If it's not turbo, I don't really need the DC. I completely understand. I completely... Especially when you, uh, your main plan is flipping. Uh, I know in one of my uh, my Esper list, I personally... I took it out for... I took the consultation out for a little bit, but I liked it because it, it allowed me to have the turbo potential because I'm jamming uh, unprotected Thassa's consultation if I can get it off turn one to turn two. I don't care. Period. But on the other side, uh, I definitely can hear if your plan if your plan A is no, I want to get a protected guy root out. I don't need to see consultation because all that's doing is exiling all my clone effects and stopping okay. my. So I definitely can hear you there. Okay, so we got Thassa's tainted patch. Let's let's keep going. What else are you seeing, brother? Um. So then we also have uh, Tide Spout Tyrant. It's a very simple. You know, get it out there. If you have your mana rocks, you start making infinite mana. Mm -hmm. uh, once you got infinite mana, you cast the rock, you bounce Garuda, and then you start just recasting Garuda over and over again. You mill yourself, you mill your opponents. Um, eventually, you hit all the pieces that you need. You can hit other people's thoughts of the oracles or clone your own if you get it onto the battlefield and you just win that way. 100% that nice clean and simple if you all are not familiar this is similar to hole breaker horror where if tide spout tyrant is out is out it says whenever you cast a spell you return a target permanent to the owner's hand so let's say you have two net neutral mana rocks like uh that together their mana produced is greater than the mana it costs to cast them so let's say mana crypt and a uh what is the um arcane signet so you cast arcane signet you'll bounce the mana crypt and you'll float a mana of your choice off of it and you'll cast the mana crypt again bounce the arcane signet and this time you'll float the two men off the man crypt do that infinite number of times you will get infinite mana so nice clean and simple love the tide spout tyrant lines so all right keep going so we got thassus and we got tide spout so what else we got brother all right so the next one is a little bit more complicated but it's actually the way that i win the most consistently with the deck and the cards okay. include so it's gonna be guy itself okay, uh, we need uh, Bark Double, or like an Auton Soldier, or um, any of the ones that make a non-legendary copy of Garuda that that are zero power, zero toughness. Gotcha. Uh, plus Ruthless Technomancer. Mm hmm. Ruthless, yeah, and Ruthless, Ruthless, uh, Ruthless Technomancer is similar. We see this a lot with Dockside combos, so yeah, makes sense. All right, keep going, brother. Yeah. So, um, those two, and actually the third one. Third one is going to be. Um, Dead Eye Navigator. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Dead Eye Navi De Navigator. It's funny. We've seen these Dark Side Companion cards still being good. Okay. Keep going. Yes. So, the way that this works, and it seems a little bit convoluted, but again, this is the way that I win the most often just because the way the flips work sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so, you have Garuda in play. You get a uh, Spark Double or Auton Soldier into play. You have a non legendary copy of Garuda. Okay. You flip into. Ruthless Techmancer, or you cast it, you can sack the non-legendary copy, make six um, or seven treasures if it's Spark Double, because it gets the plus one, plus one counter. Understood. And with Ruthless Technomancer's ability, you can uh, use uh, use the treasures, you know, two and a black, sacrifice X, uh, X artifacts to return target creature or power X or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. X can't be zero. Mm. Um, so you just need to pay four treasures or you know three mana and a, a rock of some kind if you don't need it anymore and you can bring back the spark devil or auton soldier mm. get another guy to trigger with dead eye navigator into the mix um that's going to be if it's not spark double if it's auton soldier it'll be net even but you'll get to make copies of garuda infinitely mm. and then with spark double you'll always net one treasure so you'll have infinite well, i say infinite you'll have uh excess mana 100 percent that loop and at this point, you'll mill your entire library. You can either go Thassa's at this point, or you can mill your whole library and have all your clone effects. And at this point, once we have pretty much infinite uh, Garuda ETBs, what are we doing after that? Um, yeah, so so yeah, you, 
just the same way that you went with uh, Tide Spout Tyrant. Uh, you okay. get the infinite ETBs, you mill everybody out, you mill yourself, and then with Ruthless Technomancer, you don't need to bring the classes into play, or if it's already in the graveyard, you can reanimate it with Ruthless Technomancer and the excess treasures you have. Got you. Understood. Understood. Got you. Got you. Got you. Yeah. That makes sense. Now, the only question I have on my side is with the Ruthless, with the Ruthless Technomancer line, is saying pay two in a black, so that's three mana already, uh, and we have to sacrifice X artifacts to return target creature card with power X or less from the graveyard. So because yeah. the Spark Devil has a zero power and zero toughness, at that point we're just paying three, well, four treasures at that point to create six, we'll create another Gyruda, and then we could... Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, and then with, if you're paired uh, Ruthless Technomancer and Dead Eye together, uh, it's one in a blue, two ah, flicker, the Ruthless Technomancer. That's how you yeah. re-get the, the uh, you'll re-get the Ruthless Technomancer ETB. So all together, this combo costs six mana, but with the, and that's where you say you'll net one mana. With the Spark Devil, it'll be seven treasures you'll get. So everything together will cost three, well, four technically. Well, no, do you even need to sacrifice any uh, artifacts since the power is zero? Not usually. You can. And it's nice to have the Auton Soldier as well when you do that, because Auton Soldier is an artifact itself. So you can sack the Auton Soldier, pay three mana, um, and then the Ruthless Techmancer can just bring back the Auton Soldier that you just sacrificed. Got but yeah, so, you. Got you. Yeah, got so you. if you sack the Spark Double, you make seven treasures. Um, Understood. Bring it back with the Ruthless Techmancer for four. You have three treasures left. And then got you. you pay Two to flicker it, and you're left with one treasure. Okay. In the case of Spark Double, in the case of Auton Soldier, you net even. Okay, but the infinite ETBs will eventually hit Tide Spout Tyrant, and then that's where we get our infinite mana from. Um, actually, you don't even need Tide Spout Tyrant at that point. If you have the ability to make, uh, because Spark Double will enter as a Spark Double or Auton Soldier will enter as a Garuda each time, but you'll yes. keep getting the ETBs with this loop. Yes. Okay. And then with the last iteration, once everything's milled out, you can just reanimate the Oracle with the Technomancer. Got the you. A hundred percent. And another question I have, do you have any ways to force your opponents to draw? Say for example, if the Thoracle is not on the board, because I know sometimes the, the pass and hope they don't have a way to win can sometimes be a little daunting. Yeah, so normally I don't ever need to pass. Um, mm. I don't think I've ever actually passed turn once I've done this loop. Yes, I can mill everyone out and I could pass turn if I wanted to, mm. um, but the way that it, it works, I just mill everything that I need into my my graveyard, right? So Thassa's Oracle in my graveyard, or if someone else, if mine got exiled and someone else is playing Thassa's Oracle, I just bring theirs back with a Gyruda trigger. Mm. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. And then in response to the ETB, continue to loop and then resolve the thoughts of Oracle ATB. Mm, I hear, that makes sense, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Now I do have a question real quick. Uh, we have some questions in the chat from uh, some brothers who are saying, has Roaming Throne been good? And another guy has been saying, curious about that as well. We're kind of, if is there any win cons that include Roaming Throne or is this more just a value piece with this our is, Garuda? Yeah, so this is a value piece. However, I, don't think I've ever landed a roaming throne and then Garuda and then not one on the spot. Oh, please yeah. talk to us. <laughs> so I can, so usually I can set it up where, it, you know, cast the uh, roaming throne. And then if I feel like I'm good to go for it, cast Garuda. Mm -hmm. um, of course, roaming throne, when you have it enter, you name either demon or Kraken. I always name Kraken because I don't play any other demons in here. I used to whenever I played Razaketh, but. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, so I just name Kraken for the lulls, and then uh, when Garuda comes into play, I get two triggers, right? Right. So I get to see eight cards, not only from myself, but eight cards from each other player. That is 32 cards. What the fuck? 30, <laughs> right. And if I'm playing against any other blue decks, good chance they're playing clones as well. So with those 32 cards being milled away, I usually see at least one clone, and when I get that clone into play, make it a copy of Garuda, I get two more ETB triggers, another 32 oh. cards. Oh, yeah, and yeah, it yeah. No balls real fast. Especially off you, even your just your own deck alone. Like even Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine. I cannot imagine. Like, do you know the number of clones just off the dome real quick? 
Uh, I think I have it's 14 or 15. 14 or 15. Like at this point, like I'm thinking with just your deck alone and then you put in the fact that every deck is running clones that have a sprinkle of blue because they're just generically good. I, yeah, I can't see a universe where like you don't get there. If not hit somebody else's thoughts as you have tainted packed in hand or some other mixture of things where you can really just tear it all up. Oh my gosh. I love this man. Yeah, it's okay. Great. So Roman Thones in the isn't way it's it's a win con. It's basically a thing, but it's uh it it's <laughs> it's spicy. It's definitely like uh it is not a win more card, it is a win enabler with your commander. Like a two card combo, honestly. It's basically a two card combo, yeah. It's very I don't think I think I've maybe whiffed once, but I still ended up getting something of value yes. from just just from the thirty two cards itself. Right, right, right. Yeah. Hit that someone's dock side or something like that. <laughs> right right i got you i got you best card in the game all right all best right card so in the game. with that being said we've talked about the thassas win we've talked about tights about tyrant wins we've talked about some ruthless technomancer the most common win con so if you are still are a little confused about that please drop the questions down and we'll get nybar to answer those but scroll back for about the last 10 minutes and he really go just broke it down very well and we've also just talked about the one card win con with this deck pretty much roaming thrown with a crazy layer of potential so do we have any other win cons brother um i mean i've gotten close to stealing other people's win cons <laughs> <laughs> that's so real okay yeah. talk to me about that talk to me uh i think there was a game at the mox masters invitational where i had um i played i played dothy in the deck so i had um countered someone's uh glint horn buccaneer that went under dothy in exile Right. And then the uh, following uh, turn cycle came back to me. I had a clone in hand. They had their Malcolm out. I was like, cool, I can clone their Malcolm. I can get, I can just cast Glint Horn Buccaneer for free. <laughs> um, but I was one mana short of being able to win with their combo. No. Yeah. But, um, oh, I'm sorry, because, brother. Dang. That's, that's all good. That was, it was really cool that I wanted to go for it. But in the moment, I had just miscounted. You know, math is, is uh, our hardest thing to do. Please, math, reading, comprehension, checking for stacks pieces before you try to go off there. <laughs> it gets the best of us, man. It really, really it does. Really, it really does. Man. But, um, but any decks that use creature combos, nothing yeah. too complicated. Um, because of the amount of clones I play, I can copy their creatures and just win with their cards. 100%. Okay, that yeah. makes 100% sense. So with that said, um, these are that's pretty much all our com all the combos we pretty much talked on, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So with that being said, we got to get to these combo pieces and it sounds like your commander is the best way to get it. But do we have any tutors to help support this uh, strategy that we have going now? Just the generic black tutors, I think. Uh, okay. We got Imperial Seal, Vampire Tutor, Demonic Tutor. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, we could just, count Tainted Pact as a forbidden tutor, but you know, in it, yeah, worst I have case used scenario. it as I have used it as a forbidden tutor. Um, one one creature that does allow me some flexibility with tutors is the uh, Spectral Arcanist. I was just gonna ask you about that earlier. Talk to me, yeah. Um. So let me pull it up here uh spectral arcanist reads uh whenever it enters the battlefield you may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value less than or equal to the number of spirits you control from a graveyard without paying its mana cost it goes to exile once you cast it mm. um a lot of our tutors in the format are one mana so i just need the one spirit <laughs> spectral arcanist in play to cast that tutor and uh you know worldly tutor vampire tutor a lot Dude. of those decks play those I want to say that I love that you brought this card up because you know what this reminds me of? Dire Fleet Daredevil. Are you familiar with that card? I am, yeah. One in a red. Yeah, one in a red. When Dire Fleet Daredevil enters the battlefield, exile target instant or sorcery card from the opponent's graveyard. You may cast it this turn, and mana of any type can be spent to cast this spell if the spell will be put in the graveyard this uh, in a great into a graveyard exile instead. I play this yeah, in my similar. mono red Reonia decks, and this I love that you're you're leveraging the fact. Okay, okay, I don't have all the best tutors because I'm only in blue and black, but. What I can do is use my opponent's tutors, and I absolutely love that. Love it, dude. Keep going, man. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I, I really do value those top of the deck tutors too. So Imperial Seal, Vampire Tutor. Whenever you play Garuda, if you've just tutored something 
like Spark Double or Ruthless Text Minister to the top, you're going to get that into play for free. No, one billion percent. And at that point, honestly, you can go into a turn if you have enough mana. And because I played a couple <laughs> against a couple uh, the Iruda decks where they 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 will be patient and get a crazy amount of mana. You can literally go Spectral Sailor and this cast it for free. Yep, without uh, paying the mana cost. And so you cast like, this and then Garuda, that's only 10 mana. But y'all, we're going to get to the ramp package soon. Uh, and at that point, you're just setting up for at least a minimum of one bomb hit off that point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds good. Any other tutors you want to talk about? Um, tutors, I don't think I have any more in there. Okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking through. I'm not really seeing anything that is... Uh, no, nothing outside the fetch lands. Of course, we have Urza Saga. Not really seeing, like, I'm not seeing the Graph Diggers Cage. Of course, you all, if no. please don't run Graph Diggers Cage no. to this list. Uh, it, it will is. shut your own deck down. <laughs> yeah, it's that's the one The one weakness to the deck is Graph Diggers Cage, unfortunately. Right. I, I definitely hear you there. Uh, at that point, though, yeah. Well, but you did, um, even though we don't run a huge tutor package, you did bring up that your new strategy is to be able to establish an early game draw engine to support more of a mid-range game. And so let's talk about some yep. draw engines. Like what are, what are our key draw engines and card draw pieces in this deck? I mean, if you look at all the creatures in there, I think 14 or 15 clones, those could all be potential draw engines, right? Ah, talk to me. So um, a lot of uh, decks play creature-based draw engines. If you talk about Blue Farm, you got Timna and Krom in the command zone, uh... right? And you got some really interesting clones as well, like uh, Clever Impersonator, which can be a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. Yep. So you can make that Aristic Study, a Fish, um, yeah, whatever. A it One needs Ring. To be. <laughs> a One Ring, exactly. So and then yeah, of course we got the the usual uh, Demir package. We got Aristic Study, Mister mm -hmm. Grimora. Um, I do have a black market connections in there as well. I saw that. Yes, yes. Talk to me about the reason for this inclusion, brother. Um, Garuda costs six mana, and I also need to, you know, be able to keep my hand full, make sure I have counter spells. So this does uh, mana and card draw in one, right. which is really nice. And since we're not using our life total, I do not see an ad nauseum or a necro. I think black and market, <laughs> I mean, black market connections yeah. being that one source of like, hey. I'll lose at least three life a turn, but now I'm seeing an extra card and I'm seeing getting an extra treasure token to help keep the game going. Has it performed exactly. well for you in the games you've like, is it a mainstay or is it still kind of a play, in the play test area? This is, this is a mainstay. This is, this has been in since the beginning. I have not taken it out. Wow. I will, yeah, I love yeah. hands where I see, you know, underground sea, man and crypt, black market connections. I'm like, cool. So I got, you know, card draw and treasures coming to me next turn once I play this. Good. And, uh, and the biggest thing for me, uh, I run Marnie as Calgary. That is my main list I'm running right now. Of course, shout out to the Reunion community. I love y'all. But Reunion, Marnie as Calgary has been my main list. And I'm actually not running this one mainly because my main hold up on it is that you play it and it doesn't immediately do anything. Are there any times yeah. where you feel like you see it and you just wish you got it a turn earlier? Or is it just usually no matter what you see it and like, okay, this card is not going to do anything immediately, but it will do exactly what I need to do when I need to do it. How do you usually feel about it in those tough situations? Yeah, I mean, it's not the like perfect card. I'd rather much see Ristic Study, right? Right. It's going to draw me a lot more cards, but it does the job pretty well, and it will give me mana for future turns. Um, it will allow me to see the extra cards. So on the turn I play it, sure, it doesn't do anything. But um, if I... You know, if I have some counterspell magic in my hand, I don't feel too bad about it. Okay. That makes yeah. 100% sense. I support that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I do especially even addition loving this because uh, I know a lot in the Marnies community, it's like, oh, you're making so many tokens. And I'm like, nah, like if you're using this just for the fact that you want to draw cards and ramp out is doing everything you need to do. We're not using it to be flashy. It's actually a great utility piece for everything you want to do. And like I said, you're not using your life totally. I'm not seeing the Necro. I'm not seeing the Ad Nas. So it's actually perfect. I love this. I'm also seeing a steel enchantment, and I'm not I'm guessing you're taking people's arrows off their lands. I'm thinking we have some better juicy targets in mind with this steel enchantment. Yeah, I was in a game a week ago. I stole someone else's Mystic Grimora. They weren't drawing <laughs> cards off of it, so I was like, sure, I'll give you a card, and then I'll take your Mystic Grimora. And then people are like, well, you know, that guy's not drawing cards anymore. Let's play our, let's play our spells now. And then I drew a bunch <laughs> of cards. It was great. 
It was great. So yeah, I use it to to take uh, Ristics and Mystics away from people. Hundred percent. Okay. And as we look, no, yeah, I I uh, I feel like in Demir it is definitely a great include. I I believe there's another Demir deck, the Flash Five Mana Commander. What is it called? Uh, oh, Nimrus. Nimrus is another great yeah. steel enchantment deck. Like when you're in these two colored pies and you know you may not have access to white, where you, there's a lot of new draw engines coming out in white. Like as in, within the Esper kind of identity, Steel Enchantment is a great include. So I definitely support oh, that yeah. decision. Oh, with the with the printing of Trouble and Pairs, I can't wait to steal that as well. Oh, if you all are not familiar with Trouble and Pairs, this one, hold on. I'm pulling this on the, up on screen as I, the stream sees my amazing spelling skills. You all don't be jealous. Now, <laughs> Trouble and Pairs like is a... an enchantment, and it says if an opponent would begin an extra turn that player skips that turn instead so no final fortune no time seed uh -uh -uh. and it says whenever an opponent attacks you with two or more creatures draw uh, draw uh whenever an opponent attacks you with two or more creatures draw their second their second card each turn or cast their second spell each turn you get to draw a card which is you get mangara and what is the other one what is the, this combined fair and fairy mastermind i'm like did you really need to get this all to the mono white decks? Man, right. the, I feel like the only saving grace of this is they didn't make this three in a white. They made it two and two white. So yeah, at least a little bit harder cast, but it's yeah. still powerful. Yeah, especially in those three plus color decks. I'm not currently running it in my uh, Marnie's list, but I do think it's a crack card. I think it absolutely needs to be deck. I just usually like getting my draw engines out by turn one to turn two. But if you see someone turbo this out and you see a steel enchantment in your hand, it's like you'd be like, thank you. <laughs> Thank I you would take very that. Much. Okay, but I de I definitely feel that. Um, any other like baby draw engines? I'm seeing a Cephalic Coliseum. Anything else where we get a little card draw advantage here and there? Oh yeah, I think we also got in the creature package. We got uh, Italian. Oh, I love Italian. Slept on yeah. card. Slept on card. Great draw. I love. Engine. I love that's four mana. <laughs> oh, and it's the even mana cost. We can't hit this off of a right guy to hit. Very very good. Yes. Anything else? Oh, we didn't even talk about the One Ring. Oh, and then, yeah, the One Ring, of course, as well. Can't hit that off Garuda, unfortunately, but oh. it's also just, I mean, we make enough mana turn one or two to easily get that out there. 100%, 100%. Okay. Let's see. Not seeing anything else really, like, two card drawing, nothing else. Anything else that lets you see an extra card or two? Um. Yeah, nothing out of those that I spoke about, again, that the clones will be useful in that regard as well. Hundred percent. Right? Copying, copying the creatures that will uh, that other people are playing to get their card draws out. That makes a hundred percent sense. Okay, hundred percent. Okay. Well, now we've talked about ways to win. We talked about white ways to tutor to get those wins, and we've also talked about ways to support this by getting early and mid game draw engines out to support our game plan. But even though we draw on all these cards, we have to be able to protect our board, ourself, and our spells. So let's talk about some things, some ways we would protect ourselves and our guy Ruta and the spells we put on the stack. Like, what's the protection pieces we run in this deck? Yeah, so we got the, you know, we're in Demir. We don't have any silences or anything like that to really protect our win. Yeah. So we just got to rely on the counter spells. Um, sometimes I can get, sometimes I can get lucky and. You know, steal a Grand Abolisher or something like that, but um, or clone someone says like Ranger Captain of Yos, right? But right. for the most part, it's going to be that normal uh, blue counter spell package. So we're running both the forces. Mm -hmm. We got Force Negation. We got Force of Will. Um, we got Fierce Guardianship. Hundred um, percent. Even though got rid of six mana, I do like to get him out there. He's you know when he's out there, he's out there. Hundred percent. And so Fierce Guardianship is definitely nice to have. Uh, we got Indeed. Swan Song, Fluster mm -hmm. Storm. Uh, we got the Mind Break Trap, of course. Oh, can't and leave home without it. And then I think that's it for like the normal ones. Some of the uh, spicier ones I'm including Mana Drain. Yep, uh, I love it's been drain. really love Mana Drain. You know, counter uh, Tivit, counter Atraxa, get six or seven mana, and then cast get rid of the next turn. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. Uh, delay has been really nice for me. Yeah. Um, just because a lot of you know the counter spells don't hit creatures, delay can hit some of those really um, hard to interact with creatures on the stack. Mm, I, I like that. I like that. 
I 100% yeah. agree. I think I am the, I tell people this all the time, when I play control in CDH, I am a, I will cut you off at the knees. I will counter your dock side. I do not care. It's not the winning spell. You're not casting a winning spell if you don't got the mana. <laughs> I will exactly. delay your dock. I will delay your dock side. I will mana drain it. I do not care. I will stifle its ETB. We're not having a conversation about it. Finito. Yep. So I definitely hear you there, brother. Yep. Uh, and then the last counter spell that I got is Stubborn Denial. Mm, love to see it. Perfect with yep. your commander having that greater than four power to be just a hard non creature power counter spell. And great on turn one. You know, a lot of people yep. don't really know that, like, you hold them with that one blue, they're like, I'm just gonna cast my soul ring. Oh, if they, what they gonna mental misstep it? Yep. I'm gonna stubble denial it. <laughs> you know I what mean, I'm saying? I mean, people. I mean, folks will play their land and mana crypt and cast their Rhystic study with no mana left open. Stubborn denial is perfect for that as well. 100. Oh, yeah, 100. percent Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at that point, unless you got a spirit guide, not much you gonna say about that. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Yep. I love um, that. And that I guess there's one other counter spell. I got the stifle in there as well. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I think I think it's important to have um, at least one way to stop creature abilities from happening because it's being it's kind of the way that decks win a lot, right? The Thoughts Oracle being the main one, and you have other really popular ones. Um, Dockside. And... Dockside, yeah, Dockside. Counter that and then copy it the next turn for yourself. <laughs> exactly. 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 Yeah. yeah so one a billion percent uh some other protection pieces i'm seeing is we got the one ring to give ourselves protection that's nice uh not really seeing anything else okay we i am seeing the cavern of souls great way to protect our spells in the stack really mm -hmm. powerful um to get this down uh you can cast some sp some more ramp spells and then play your cavern of souls because people i'm gonna let all the spells resolve and counter the guy ruda ha 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 no you won't be i love seeing yep. that um uh, nothing any else i'm seeing when it comes to protecting ourselves our spells or our board i guess we can count reanimate a little bit it's nice to have yeah. a way to you know okay you killed my guy i'm gonna let it go to the graveyard and i'm gonna bring it back yeah yeah you could do it that way and yeah. i think uh one if you're talking about like protection on board ghost ghostly flicker is another nice one to protect guy oh one uh, billion while percent. also gaining advantage right yes i love that and I'm also seeing you are running uh, Essence, Essence Flux. Flux. And they yes. do a similar, very similar thing, except it is a one blue, which is really, really good. That's, yeah, that's really powerful. Just if I only have Gerrit out, Essence Flux is great. Ghostly Flicker is great. If I have multiple copies or other creatures like Ruthless Technomancer out. Yeah, no, I definitely hear you there. We got some questions in the chat for you. Uh, um Nybar. so first question is first one we got sky saying what's up what's up sky next we have uh i i'm away uh we have reanimate is also great for when things get dumped out that aren't uh evens you don't choose very true and we have odre <laughs> oh dre saying has anyone ever won off copying your own garuda uh i i have had that happen to me before actually yeah i oh. um I think uh, the last, or maybe the previous Mythic Lotus tournament I was in, I was in a pretty dominating position. I definitely made some mistakes, but there was a Sisse player who managed to eke out a win by just be like, well, I'm just going to roll the dice and copy your guy and see how we get there. And they got <laughs> there, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, man. We love that, to see it. We love to yeah. see it. <laughs> that is sometimes the downside to this deck is that... Um, you want to clone your commander, but sometimes other people will get that idea into their head, <laughs> even though their deck's not really built for it, but they can right. always uh, get lucky. A hundred percent. You know, we, we're we playing an imperfect game. We're not playing chess. We're playing an imperfect game where anything is possible. So, yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes those great players who are creative enough to think, I mean, if I hit a Doxide or, oh, if I hit a Thassas or, I mean, maybe one of my opponents can, you know, it just allows you really just to get creative and pull some really creative wins out. So, yeah, we also got some really. Uh, we have a couple more questions we have. Let's see. We just got a bunch of like your your people are saying what's up to you, man. You got a lot of pe love people throwing your way and just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, has a, a question they're referring to before. How does Gary line up against breach decks meme bed? Do you feel like more asymmetrical grave hate is ever needed? Mm. That is. Yes. Yeah, so that's the biggest. Um, downside is that breach is a very popular um 
win con in a lot of decks, and so is Mean Betrayal. Um, so playing Gyruda um, does fuel other people's strategies. Mm -hmm. um, even if they're not on Breach, if they're just like on a like a reanimate style deck, something that has like Hulk piles and whatnot, mm. it can be kind of uh, tough. Which is why I've kind of changed my play style. I don't like to turbo out Gyruda anymore if I don't have anything to back it up. Yeah, definitely. I hear um, you there. I, I do play for the mid game. I do play so that I have ways to interact when I finally cast my commander. 100%. Um, as far as ways to prevent breach decks from getting out of hand, I got my counter spells. Um, I have Dothy. Um, I had considered running uh, the Black Leyline. Hmm. You've get, so you the Black Leyline is. I think two and a black, and if a card would enter an opponent's graveyard, it gets exiled instead. Ah, so that's actually my next question I wanted to ask you. How does Garuda's ability interact with things like Dothy Voidwalker and Leyline of the Void? Um, so it's actually on the ruling for Garuda. Okay. I don't know if you have the Gatherer open or not, but um, yeah, Garuda does not care if the card, if the creature that gets put into the graveyard gets exiled because the way that Gyruda reads, um, put a creature card with an even mana value from among the milled cards onto the battlefield under your control. Mm. So it doesn't care if uh, they get exiled. It just cares if they were from the milled cards. Got you, got you, got you. And do you have, uh, I can't, I'm looking at the rulings right now just to be able to show the people. Uh, let, me, let me, if I look at control a exile. Yeah, let's see. If a replacement effect causes a player to exile the top four cards of their library instead of putting them into their graveyard as Gyro's triggered ability resolves, the creature card you choose may be one of those cards in exile. Bada boom right there. If you all can see right it on there. screen. So you're so this is beautiful because things like your own ley line of the void, or uh, we have a Dolphy Void Walker in the 99, does allow you to still cuck the breach strategies and not feed them while still doing your own game plan. I love that thought process. Great question, uh, Dr uh, Dre. And so we have, we have the yeah, Dre saying, oh, Ashia's Dream Render or Soul Guide. Uh, have you thought about those? I have not. Um, I don't want to put in too much a uh, thing that would kind of subtract from the game plan. Understood. Um, Breach is a card that's easily counterable, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can I can hit with any pretty much almost any of my counter spells, so I don't really have to worry that's um, true. about Breach, especially if I haven't played Garuda yet, right? Understood, um, yeah. And usually when people are trying to Breach, um, they already have, you know, it's their intuition pile. They already got everything they need to do it anyway. Yeah. So... I definitely hear that. You know, I, I guess the next best way to stop people from winning with breach is to counter the breach. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that, and that makes 100% sense. Okay, yeah. that makes sense, brother. All right, so at this point, we had some really great audience questions, but I do have a question. So we talked about board protection. And so mm -hmm. I want to kind of transition to how do we interact and remove things on our opponent's board? What is our package looking like for that, brother? Yeah, so I believe I have uh, Toxic Deluge. 100%, uh, yep. The best, I think the best board wipe in the format, honestly, right now. It's so good. Um, if you're not using Light Total, 100% yeah, it is, yep. Exactly. And with the, if I have my commander out, right, I can just pay five life into it. Mm -hmm. Don't lose my Garuda. Pay, I pretty much get rid of everything else. Wow, um, anything real. else that would stop me. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so Toxic Deluge is one way to interact with creatures on the board. Um, I the big like silver bullet against the deck is going to be like the Graft Digger's Cage. So I have a couple of ways to deal with that. I have um, Resculpt. Yep. Which will exile an artifact or a creature. Mm -hmm. I got the Psych Rift. And yep. I have a Disperse. Okay. Um, and... I had waffled between Snap and Disperse, but Disperse hits any non-land permanent, yeah, which will allow I, me to yeah. hit the stacks pieces that aren't creatures. Yeah. Um, so snap is nice, but I, I do like disperse for just the redundancy and making sure I can get rid of the silver bullet stacks pieces that are affecting me. Hundred percent. I was literally when I when I, we were talking about board protection, I was like, "This is interesting. I'd never seen this card." But when we do have a singular card that is also very commonly uh, used in CDH and also is super easy to tutor, 
being that graph diggers cage and it's so easy just to go turn one graph diggers cage if i have no other plays having a way to hit any non-land permanent is just important especially when you know you can do it at instant speed so definitely hear you there brother keep going man yep. what's some other interaction and removal spells that we have we got some some great cards in in black we got dismember um usually only paying one mana for that again not really heavy on on the life as a as a resource for the deck so not not hard to pay for life for that uh snuff out is great because we're in a two color deck we almost always have a swamp so we'll just pay that uh for life and kill a creature and 100%. fatal push as a way to deal with some of the smaller stuff like Dranith. um a lot of the smaller creatures are uh, the big problem in the format right now so fatal push is great uh for dealing with that it's only one black mana I definitely hear you there. Now, when I saw this card, I was like, do we have a hidden modern player in our <laughs> Among Us? <laughs> do, you, do you got any modern background? Because I definitely, la I never get to see this a lot in CDH, but any modern background or legacy background? So I'm I'm just, a, I'm an EDH player through and through. I've only been playing Magic since uh, 2017, and gotcha. I started with casual EDH, and then I jumped into CDH after that. So no other formats besides that. Ah, uh, got you, got you, got you. So when you saw Fatal Push, it was like a, supply meets demand there's a lot of small creatures in our format demand there's a supply there's a demand for some removal here's yep. a supply fatal push got you got, got you got you okay let's keep talking about removal we have uh, i also see this member keep talking brother yeah so i think as far as hard removal that is about it in the instance we talked about the sorceries uh creature rem uh creatures that also do removal i got gilded drake it's not removal per se but it will give me something that i like um, it will, it will, it's going to remove a uh, train of the magistrate i'll tell you that <laughs> yeah so it'll give me control of something that um i would rather have than someone else right right and then uh we have a massacre worm i was gonna ask right about too. that one yep <laughs> um but we talked about win cons this is also a win con uh in itself uh -huh. honestly uh I've, I've had a couple of games. I think, uh, didn't you have Jamaican Dude on a little bit ago? Yes, uh, not too long ago, yeah. Yeah, he could probably tell you. But he, he hates this card a lot. <laughs> um, I played against him in back-to-back -back tournaments, and uh, this came out against him in, in, in both tournaments. The, the first time, he was on, um, I think, Timna Thrasios. Mm. And uh, I had played the Massacre Worm, kind of did a little mini board wipe, got the Auton Soldier clone of Massacre Worm out. Mm. And then um, on my neck of combat, swan with the Massacre Worm and the Auton Soldier, which has Myriad. Now Myriad makes uh, two more copies attacking the opponents that the original wasn't, right? So you're getting two copies, double ETB triggers, and I had four copies of the Massacre Worm out. Oh uh, so my gosh. Four. Yeah, so that's minus four, minus four to everything um so that clears most of whatever people have out right and then the bottom text is really important whenever a creature an opponent controls dies that player loses two life with four copies of that for each creature they, they're, they're losing eight life mm. and uh unfortunately uh ashani had four creatures out and lost 32 life on that swing no before before the massacre worm even connected Man, oh, that's so right. Cause each massacre worm triggers, causing each one to cause them to lose two life. No, yeah. oh my gosh, that's nasty, bro. That's it's, nasty. It's, yeah, I I've had this in the deck, and I've taken it out once before and put it back in, and I don't <laughs> think I'll ever ever take it back out ever again. It's it's a really nice way to. Yeah control the board and with the amount of clones we have we can just keep resetting the board you know wiping the cannons out getting yeah. rid of the tendas um and getting rid of the Najilas, right there are so many creatures out there with just two or less toughness and uh eventually the six fives are just gonna beat face and win the game that way yeah i remember my first time losing against this deck it was actually they had about 20 guy ruda like actual copies of guy ruda non-legendary copies and so Creature Beats is actually a real thing and knowing that you can do it with Masker Room to both off the ETB ability and its static ability, not to mention off, I mean also the triggered ability to be able to make copies of this one if this is what you hit. It's just, it's freaking crazy, dog, man. I love it's this. insane. And yeah. I will say this, my first time ever seeing this card, 
I think it was Craig off of uh, the Command Zone. He played the Mask of Worm as like his Infect deck or something like that. And for okay. me, I can't say I I can't say how much joy it brings me that a quote unquote casual card is as viable in CDH because it, it just it harps on the name like you being a fringe and fishing uh fishing out uh, oh my gosh uh enthusiast a fringe enthusiast yeah. of showing like y'all like i know we have these staples but y'all there's some great cards in this uh in this game called magic the gathering and we can't just tunnel vision on what is the best way we have to explore and try new things and so you've explored and tried new things and i love it brother no cap yeah man. I love that I've been able to put a mask worm into a competitive deck. It fills me with so much joy. Oh my gosh. Now, for one sec, we have to pause for one second. We have another conversation going on in the chat right now. Uh, we have yeah. Dre saying, uh, so there are a few um, dispersed variants that have better upsides. And so I asked which ones. And so first one he's bringing up is Alchemist Retrieval. Hmm. It's the one that has the cleave cost, right? Right, I believe I'm so. Let me. I'm sure there are better variants. I'm I'm just using, <laughs> unfortunately, just using the cards that I own. Oh, I um, understand. I understand. So I had a copy of Disperse, and I was like, that's probably better than Snap here. I definitely hear you there, and especially the one thing I will say about this Alchemist Retrieval uh, is the thing I like about it is it's still two mana if to return any line land permanent to the hand. Thank you for thank you for the follow uh, cookout. Appreciate you. Um, but we also have that um, it can return your own thing for just a singular blue. And so I, I do like this. I, I would say let's keep this in the chamber. Another one Dre threw out was Geist Wave. Interesting. I know this one actually off the dome. It's the same exact thing, but it says return target nine land permanent to its owner's hand. If you control that permanent draw card. So exactly as the uh, as the, the um, what is it the disperse says but you have the draw card if it's your own permanent so you can bounce your own copy effect to keep the chain going and last we have winds of rebuke i know this one is well this is actually a fun one yeah. to cuck the top deck tutors yes i i love winds of rebuke i I've, I've played that in some mill strategy decks before it's a great yeah. card and so what like uh outside of possibly mi maybe milling out your own combo piece or whatever not that kind of would kind of suck it would be cool to have another like all right i'm gonna bounce the grab digger cage and all and also uh have the ability to say bounce your grab digger's cage and you know you just top deck tutored let's get rid of that as well yeah. <laughs> so i think well, that's I, really cool yeah i got got rid of for taking care of top deck tutors i do like the alchemist retrieval and the geist wave i think i'll probably consider those because just having the one mana option to bounce like your own clone replay it as a dock side or something seems really good so i'll probably do that switch here pretty soon yeah no 100 percent, man thank you for those inclusions uh dre y'all keep commenting down keep commenting down i see we got some text going on y'all just uh bring light to the ones that the real important repost the uh the, the message that's real important but we will keep going on this amazing deck tech we're talking about removal and interaction we just got talking about the masker worm and how it is not just a removal piece board wipe it is also a win condition and it is really crazy so with that being said is there any other removal or interaction pieces you want to talk about brother i think we've covered all of them okay and i oh yeah. side note i did notice we missed brainstorm when we talk we're talking about draw pieces we do have a brainstorm yes yeah like please i i, I kind of see already the line but please tell the audience why are we running brainstorm in cdh oh you know sometimes we draw cards that we'd rather play for free right when we cast our commander so brainstorm is like oh i have this mask over in my hand but i'll cast brainstorm draw three cards maybe get like something cool like a counter spell put the mask worm back on top mm -hmm. then play my commander get the card for free right 100 yeah that makes sense man i absolutely love that and while we're talking about like how like i heard draw three cards and my mind immediately went to what card i what card am i thinking people what cucks you when you draw uh the orcus bowmaster so at this point i looked up and i noticed we're not running orcus bowmaster or opposition agent so if we could divert to a side for a second we're not running very powerful staples granted we are a fringe deck but a powerful french yeah. deck so what is the reason for not running these uh key staples pieces brother um so i couldn't care less about orcs so much just i'm telling you the truth <laughs> i got a six i got a six toughness commander i don't care about orcs masters <laughs> they're you know they're doing 
two, three di points of damage each turn. Yeah. You know, from Ristic draws or Mr. More draws, like they're not, and they're going to be touching, they're going to be pointing that at other stuff. Right, so right, right. You're not. I've never had a Gerda die to Orcus Spellmasters, so I'm not worried about Orcus Spellmasters. And if I am, I'm just going to Fimage it, right? Oh, uh, why run Orcus when you can just clone somebody else's Orcus Bowmasters? Right, exactly. Um, I and then love you said, that thought process. It shows you yeah. really have thought about this deeply. I love that, brother. Keep going, man. And oh, then, wow. yeah, I would like to run Opposition Agent. However, I just don't want it to be, you know, part of my... Uh, four cards I mill and I can't get it back with Guy Reader, right? So mm, I hear to me that. having that in the deck, it seems kind of like a, like a dead card almost um, unless you're getting it in your like opening hand or you're drawing it real soon afterwards. No, I, I definitely hear that. So basically what we're here, what I'm hearing is Wizards, you all need to print a even mana cost opposition agent effect. If it's not oh, the same oh. thing, give me something in the ballpark where instead of when they start, they can only like a like a give us a, a mono black version of uh, uh, Avon Mind. I would Sensor. love, I would love a four drop Ashiok that does that. Oh, that would be so hard, like the Planeswalker, right. but it it would have the the static ability. Oh, except yeah. it'd be like the mirror, dude. You're on to something. Yeah. I'm on something, right? They lost their spark, right? They did, but they didn't lose their power, though. They're still fucking crazy. Exactly. Like, but well, Abanixilis is still going ham. You know, that's right. it, it's running through the metal right now. He, he lost his spark. Fuck. We yeah. we in the bag. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We got oh, yeah. quick, very quick. We have O Dre saying, I mean, uh, that same argument could be said for any non creature in this deck, to be honest. Uh, no, that's fair. That's a yeah. fair argument, right? So I could I could mill the the one ring and not and not get it back, right? Right. Um, so that that's a fair argument. I probably could put opposition agent into the deck, and it probably would run well. Mm -hmm. um, I just um, I just like having all even can remain across creatures and being weird like that. Yeah, I respect that. It's, I would push back more, but you're performing. If you didn't place and perform, I would have more to say, but it obviously is working. Uh, another thing I would say is that with, it's the creature slot for me, like the non-creatures we can't, we weren't gonna be able to get that back in you anyway. And in not yeah. your defense, but kind of from my perspective, what I do hear about not running the opposition agent is that we have so many clone effects. I don't want to run a odd, Odd, an, an odd slot creature that I can't copy, but if I want to get an opposition agent, I'm going to clone it. If I want to get an Orcus Bowmaster, I'm going to clone it. On the flip side, if I see a one ring that I flip over, a uh, uh, mill over, okay, that sucks. Oh, I flipped over my mana crypt, that sucks. But at the end of the day, I wasn't going to be able to get that back either way. So it's kind of right. like, you know, with the non-creature slots, it's we can't really do nothing about that either way. But with the creature slots, I can respect where you're coming from on that. Like, I do think I love, I'm be honest, I love Orcus Bowmaster a lot. I love Opposition Agent. But when, we, when our game plan is like, we want to get these, we want to make sure our flips are intentional and don't want to have as many, we want to have as few dead flips as possible, whiffs as we like to call them. I can uh, I can respect that point of view. I can, I'll respect that. Yeah, I've, I've definitely dedicated the creature slots to be intentional. Um, yeah. Everything's got its purpose. It's going to be very proactive for the guy rid of plan or it's going to be extremely flexible in the sense that i can uh kind of morph to whatever shape the battlefield is taking right a hundred percent that that makes a hundred percent sense yeah uh so with that being said that's making a hundred percent sense like man like awesome questions the chat is killing it right now with the questions big shout outs to dre especially brother killing it with the questions right now man uh before we move on any any other removal or interaction anything you want to talk to me brother no no i think that's it for the interaction package okay very good interaction yeah. package like we've got to see so many things and if i if we can just quickly on touch on this one other thing uh stifle great interaction yeah. that's both protectory and protective and also something that we can use on the offense to attack our opponents with that I'm also seeing that we're choosing to run Stifle over Trickbind. Now, if anyone knows T, I love me Trick. I love Trickbind. I use it in my Mox Masters January against a 
dauntless dismantler that was trying to blow up my 20 plus treasures <laughs> and uh i tricked by the ability um is there a reason that we That's prefer hot. no yeah i i i it was my top 16 game i literally have held up two mana all of my treasures came in tapped i was i was smothering top marnie's mode and i was just like i'm going to trick by that dollars this bad if i do anything but oh, i yeah. love uh split second because it is like we're not talking about this unless you have a counterbalance the conversation is over talk to me about your thought when it comes to choosing to run the one mana variant versus the two mana uh variant yeah, so I think the, I mean, if you're looking at the downsides for Stifle, like you can interact with that, right? Over Trickbind, which is very, very hard to interact with, aside from what, like Morph and, and yeah, like a triggered ability, like uh, Counterbalance. counterbalance. Yeah. Um, and then the downside of Trickbind is that it costs one more mana. So I decided to go with the, the leaner version of it, um, just uh, just because the deck is mana hungry. Again, this is a very high CMC deck. so. I'm going to value the lower mana cost over the uninteractability. Mm, I hear that. I hear that. Okay. I, I definitely, either, especially if we for turn one stifling fetch land, I don't know if you're evil like that, but I'm, I'm not that evil. I'm going to, I'm going to wait until I, I see something that matters on the sack. I got you, brother. I got you, brother. That makes sense. Okay. But with that being said, we have a great interaction package. I don't, we didn't verbally say mental misstep. I don't think so, but we have mental misstep as well um great interaction package and we brought up ether uh, essence flux and uh ghostly flicker great things that can honestly be used in offensively if we get creative really really great things we're doing here for interaction and i love this uh let's before we get into our stacks we have old dre asking another question uh great question let's see he is saying um how do you feel about Urtai, the new Demir one? I'm guessing he's referring to the one that the uh, Sisei Weatherlight Captain runs, like that when it enters, yeah. destroy target um, creature or planeswalker from, or counter target I think spell. It's, or... Yeah, it's like counter target spell where you yeah, kill something and then your opponent draws a card. I, yes. I don't really see the, the value in that because I can't really reliably, I mean, it does have flash, right? Yes. It does have flash. Yes, yeah. it, it does have flash. So I guess maybe, but like whenever I get it off of Garuda Flip, if there's nothing else on the stack, then it doesn't do anything, right? Yeah. I w so. the the coolest thing I can say about this is that it it's even. It if you hit it off a of Garuda Flip and it's like nothing else, at base level you're destroying a target creature, uh, destroying another target creature or planeswalker, and you and its controller draws a card. So in this universe it could be card draw for yourself where it's like okay i'm gonna destroy one of like this is the lat the end of a clone chain i completely whiffed i'm gonna destroy one of my own clones and draw a card i, I can see that it's a little reaching but i've been in games yeah. where drawing one card is with uh, the difference between a win and a lose so i would definitely like consider it i would definitely not knock this one but it, i can see where this may not be the first in line yeah oh um, and he, also great point uh very last thing brother um, we also say he can, uh, you can also flicker or clone it to be able to get like, to be able to destroy multiple creatures or anything. If, if it's kind of like a prop, if, if, if anybody's board stays getting any problematic, but go ahead, brother. That is true. Yeah. So like the flicker effects to react at like instant speed to something, the counter target spell, right? If yeah. I needed the counter target spell, I could flicker it with essence flux or ghostly flickers. So that's yeah. two instances of that. Um, and then the third instance, I guess technically the, there's two more. You could flash in the stunt double, get a copy of it, or cast a spell with Displacer Kitten on the field and flicker it. Yeah, yeah. But the deck isn't really built to like flicker things mm. um, or blink things. I only have those three abilities, the Ghostly Flicker, Essence Flex, and the Cat. Yeah. So. I don't think I could reliably um, use Urtai in that way to justify a slot in the deck for it. Right, and I do hear that. Oh, very last thing. Uh, it is also a stifle effect, which is kind of nasty now that because it hits target ability, activated ability, or triggered ability. Um, and and it's also, uh, Dre brought up its synergy with Displacer Kitten. I will say yeah. this. At first, I was kind of like, ah, this that may be like how some people say cute. I'm it, it, I'm kind of almost getting sold on this, but I want to I want to hear what you have to say about that new information right there, brother. 
Yeah, I think uh, if I if I had more reliable ways to trigger that more often, I yeah. think I'd probably include it. But at the moment, it doesn't seem like a necessary include for like the interaction package. I respect that. We yeah. it basically saying we are a clone deck, not a Flickr deck. We have Flickr yep. synergies, but our main objective yeah. is to clone. That's fair. Yes. That's really fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think I do think if for any Flickr decks, uh, y'all drop down in the comment section if you're on YouTube or just go ahead and like just let us know in the chat. This is a great card to really leverage the Flickr ability. I've actually played against somebody who had Urtai in the command zone. That was like their whole strategy was fucking control. It's been a few months since I've seen them, but it it's an effective deck. You just run out of cards because, you know, you're not drawing any cards in the command zone. But now I hear that. Uh, but let's get to stacks, brother. Like, I'm seeing a Dothy Void Walker. Go ham. What's some stacks pieces for him, brother, brother? I think the that's the, the main one, right? Well, and I guess you could kind of count Talion as stacks, right? Stacks yeah. on oh, it's life a, total. I love Dothy, Talion as a stacks piece, yeah. Yeah, Talion's great. Dothy, I think, is my one and only stacks piece in the deck. Uh, because, again, Gyruda doesn't care if I uh, grab a creature from Exile or the Graveyard, right? Um, and it also only affects my opponent's graveyard. So it keeps my graveyard safe from exile. It exiles other people's graveyards, so it doesn't fuel breach and mean betrayal. Um, I don't think I will ever take it out because being able to play this on like turn one or turn two, and then if I happen to get Garuda out the next turn, uh, people just aren't ready for it. Understood, yeah, 100%. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm not. I mean, there's a world where we can we can uh, say Ristic Study and Mystic Remora is a <laughs> is a stacks piece. But I, yeah. I know I'm in the school of thought. But I'm like that. I see those are stacks pieces. But I understand that people are on the the ramp about that one. But okay, not yeah. heavy on the stacks. But we our stacks that we have is definitely ones that matter a lot. Okay, uh, let's talk ramp dog like this we have to get our commander out let's talk ramp yes so we're running the usual artifact package right we got all the artifact ramp we're on both mana vault and grim monolith sounds great um just as much mana as possible like, like gyruda is expensive and even i'm not trying to cast gyruda super early the clones are also expensive right each of right. them are four mana i think some of them are six mana like auton oh yeah um, we are at, only yeah we're at 18 four four mana spells yeah it's it's a it's a hefty package to be running and so i gotta have the mana to make sure i can get those out so we got the artifact package for that uh we do have the black market connections to help us make those treasures 100 uh we do have some rituals we have the dark ritual and we also have cabal ritual e yep easy to fill our graveyard up in this deck so cabal ritual is really nice yep um, oh yeah I think that is just about it for the ramp as far as rituals, artifacts, and oh, one more, one more spicy card for you for ramp. I feel I like we're about to say playing. the same thing. We are on Heartless Summoning. Yes! I want to talk about this. Let's talk about it. Talk to me. Heartless Summoning. I've only seen it, this in Kyrick, and I love that you're running it. Talk to me. It's so good. Um, I've definitely... I've you know played this out turn one and then the rest of the game is just easy mode. It's <laughs> oh. it's so good. Uh, all my clones go from being four mana to being two mana. Oh, it's so fire. It's it's so good. And because I'm not running anything that that dies to it, I don't I don't care about the minus one minus one. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I went from a six six to a five five. Oh no. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, right? Yeah. I'm still beating your face in with a 5-5. Five five. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Oh, I love this for you, brother. Yeah. No, uh, great interact, uh, great ramp package, man. Uh, looking at the lands, seeing the ancient tomb, but nothing uh, nothing else super crazy. I guess we can throw Urza Saga in there as well to be play Urza Saga turn one. We just yeah. go ahead and go get a, a, a zero one mana rock. Um, not seeing anything else outside the rituals. I we could say Rihanna making get a dock side, but that's more of a case by case situation. Uh, I'm about dock side. I got about 14 creatures for dock side. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I definitely hear yep. you there. Um, well, we we already started talking a little bit about it, but let's talk about some notable land inclusions. Uh, of course, we have our base. Like I'm believing we have all the fetches for the color. Or talk to us about these lands, man. Yeah, so I think let me go and pull out some of the more unique ones. Yeah. Um, 
we did talk about a couple of them i'm, I'm not gonna talk about the the ones that you see in every deck right yeah um but i am on urborg um, yes i saw this Herbert. Uh, that's just a nice way to make some of my colorless lands tap for black mana because got rid of, you know, for some reason they made his uh, colored mana hybrid cost, which is great. I don't <laughs> yes. have to worry about whether I'm paying blue or black. It can be either one. Perfect. Um, and then also just, you know, if I don't happen to have any swamps out, it turns on uh, snuff out, which is great. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Do you ever find, I, I usually don't see this too often in CDH. Do you ever find that, that giving your opponent swamps is a hindrance or hurting you? Um, not usually, but they're, you know, Adnaz is a thing, Necropotence is a thing, yeah. and being able to give them the pips needed to do that can be a downside. Right, um, right, right. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a land, and it does, I think, me more good than it does my opponents. Definitely, I hear you there, I hear you there. Okay, that makes 100% sense. Uh, yeah. Any other notable lands you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we talked about Urza Saga a little bit around already nothing too crazy it does search for soul rain or mana crypt which is really nice or mana vault if i really need the three mana or jewel lotus uh, or jewel lotus right yeah um i got cephalid coliseum which is just a nice little gotcha card right <laughs> yes for, uh, yes for yes the, for the thorical win attempts um so that's just in there as a nice little tech piece. Um, Spire of Industry, some decks use it. I do play a lot of artifacts, so it will usually be uh, tapping for colored mana, no 100%. matter what, which is nice. We do have the Cavern Souls. That is probably the MVP land because people are looking to counter Garuda. One and billion if Cavern percent. Souls is out there, yeah, if it's out there, people aren't countering Garuda. And I've had people waste their counter spells when I've used Cavern Souls to cast it. It's great. It's a great feeling. Oh my gosh, I love that. I. I know this is mean, this is evil, but I am that person that will say, I'm going to tap five mana, or I'm going to tap three mana, I'm going to cast my Combat Celebrant. And they say, I'm going to force a will it. I'm like, all right, I pass on force a will. All right, Combat Celebrant on the stack. I just countered it. Bro, I just played a Cavern of Souls and named Human, and then I tapped it. Like, what more do you want me to give you, bro? I'm evil yeah. like that, bro. I love that feeling of just like, you got to pay attention, bro. <laughs> like, exactly. what do you want? Yeah, like, no hard feelings. Yeah, no hard feelings yeah. there at all. Uh, if we can go back to Cephalic Coliseum for one second, I'm noticing we're yeah. playing the blue version, and I love it. It not only can draw you your self cards in a pinch, it can kill the Thassus player, and also it's just, it never hurts. We're in two colors. Um, it never hurts just to run an extra utility land that's more unique. Uh, I'm yes. not seeing the black version of this. Uh, the Cephalic Coliseum cycle. Um, uh, yeah, I could probably throw in the what's the uh cabal pit cabal pit thank you thank you thank you yeah, cabal pit so. if you all are not familiar with this amazing card i love it uh it is similar to separate policy where it has threshold and it says sacrifice cabal pit by paying a black and tapping it and then target creature gets minus two minus two the great thing about this one is it does hit, hit those pesky uh grand abolishers that just usually can't do nothing about it because they turn off everything but lands and planeswalkers uh yep. so yeah talk to me brother i mean simple answer is i just don't have a copy of it <laughs> <laughs> okay so basically it's what we're telling you is we are we we're getting nybar a youtube channel so y'all can subscribe and start supporting him <laughs> and then he can buy all the cars he needs that's what we've exactly. learned today <laughs> all right yeah i okay. think uh if i were to include it i'd probably take out the pathway Oh, yeah, 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 easy, easy. I was kind of looking at that one. I, I always have mixed feelings about the pathway, not because I think they're bad. It's just it take it does take a slight amount of knowing and skill and forethought to, to say I'm committing to black or I'm committing to blue. You're playing no bounce land. So it's like once you commit to that one side, there is no going back. So, yeah, I definitely hear you there. Yeah. Yep. And if we're looking at your uh, color spend as well, you're really, yeah, you're honestly. Oh, so I'm seeing your 61% on blue, 50% on black. Your blue production is above where it needs to be, but your black is super high. So, okay, I see. If the, I can see where the pathway helps with color fixing. While we're on yep. lands, how was your color? How, do you ever find that you are too much in on one direction or too much colorless or anything along that? No, not really. Okay. Yeah, the deck doesn't really have any problem with the colors. Um, a lot of the clones only take one pip. A lot of the th a lot of the things in the deck only take one pip. Some of the things that might struggle um, are probably like the Dothi and the Steel Enchantment in the very early game. 
if you yeah. know if I happen to run into a basic land and a and a dual land. But other than that, like I really don't have any problems with the land base. Okay, cool. Yeah, everything looks good when it comes to land base. Like pretty standard. Uh, I'm pretty sure if we counted, you're probably running all the fetches. If not, then you're probably dead. It's probably a reason. It's no biggie. We have the one island in here, so you pesky mono red players, you cannot catch him with a blood moon. Uh, I've seen yep. Odawara pretty clean. Everything looks good. Um, oh, question. I meant to ask about Urza Saga. Do you ever have a time where you use that second ability to make a shit ton of constructs with your clone effects? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, uh, I, I got to hear a story yeah. now. <laughs> um, not necessarily with the the clone effects, but it will, I, you know, I make the constructs and I play so many, so much artifact uh, mana ramp that I'll yeah. just have like a 4-4 four, four or 5-5. Five, five, um, you know, I'll play the Urza Saga, and then as soon as it gets that second counter, I'll on end step make that construct. And if I feel like I'm not doing anything with the mana on my uh, third lore counter, I'll make another construct and just start going to beats with that. Understood. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. Nothing really else I'm seeing. Of course, we're running gemstones. Not, nothing else too spicy with the land base. Um, are there any notable categories for specific for this specific deck that you like to touch on? um i mean the clones are really just the main it's the mainstay of the deck right it's, it's get rid of clones um so i'm playing a lot of different clones um and a lot of them have pretty unique abilities right okay. um you have the ones that everyone plays right the fimage the metamorph and right now a lot of people are on flesh duplicates so those are right. just kind of like the good generic ones they're going to copy any creature in the metamorphs case they're going to copy an artifact as well it's a good one ring there right um and then we get into like the weird stuff right mm. the weird clones that other people don't play but this deck kind of needs to to maintain that density of chaining abilities yep um so i'm just going to kind of go through my pile here and kind of sort out the clones mm -hmm. um yeah, so we got a couple of great ones. I think um, I can start off with the two that I really like that have some good uh, utility are uh, Mirror Hall Mimic and Vizier of Many Faces. Mm, talk to me. We got Vizier of Many Faces, last uh, colon in the uh, corner, and we have Mirror Hall Mimic, which yep. is actually MDFC. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So they both have, so if I'm, you know, if I have Garuda out by itself and I play one of these, um, they'll be entering as a copy of Garuda. Because of the legend rule, I'll have to send either Garuda or the clone to the graveyard. With these, I can send these to the graveyard with uh, no bad feelings, right? Because they have an ability that allows me to replay them from the graveyard. Oh, and oh my gosh, you all, that's dope. Uh, the back side of Mirror Hall Mimic says, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of enchanting creature, except it's a spirit in addition to other types. If ghastly, Mimic Cry will be put into a graveyard for anywhere, exile it instead. Oh man, that's busted. And then we have Vizier of Many Faces that says on the Embalm, it says you may have Vizier of Many Faces into the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except Vizier of Many Faces will, will if it were it's embalmed, the token has no mana cost, it's white, and it's a zombie in addition to other creature types. So the, uh, this, I'm guessing this is just a way where you get to have a second crack at Garuda hits if you, yep. for example, like fizzle out for the turn. Exactly, yeah. There there are cases where I'll play the Garuda and I don't have a backup plan and I'm just hoping for a good hit. And one of these clones is, is great because I can then kind of keep going uh, and try and hit more stuff off of Garuda. Understood. I can replay them again. I feel that. Okay. Yeah, so those have great utility in the deck. Yes. Um, let's see here. Put those aside because they're the normal ones. Uh, we talked a little bit about Clever Impersonator. Clever Impersonator is great because I don't have to have it become a copy of Garuda. I can have it be pretty much any non land permanent on the battlefield. Okay. And, and people are only playing good cards, right? <laughs> That's true. So we got copy the Ristics, uh, copy the One Rings, and copy Planeswalkers so I can get a Tevish if I need oh. to. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, that's busted. it. Has it's the most flexible clone that that I have, and I'm, I will never part ways with it. It is so good. <laughs> I hear you, brother. I hear you, brother. Yes, yep. keep going, bro. Um, I have a uh, stunt double. Uh, it's just normal clone, but it has flash. 
Mm. Flash is, Flash is a great uh, keyword to have on a, on a card, so I can always uh, have a gotcha moment um, if I need oh. to just flash it out in response to something. Yeah, that's a goodbye top deck tutor. That is a, oh, I know what the top, I've just brainstormed. I know what the top card of my library is. I'm going to win at instant speed. Or yep. if can this deck win at instant speed? Question mark. It can. Yes. If I have the board oh. set to the way that I need it, um, I, I have one at instant speed. And I'm guessing the out the win count will be Thassa's, not a tie spout, because we're not running a uh, born. So we're it's just yeah. like at instant speed, I can just perfectly set it up to just win on top of you with Thassa's. Okay, yeah. I love that. Keep going, brother. And uh, notably, ruthless Technomancer's ability you can activate it at instant speed as well. Oh. So that that comes into play a lot as well. You know what? This card, whenever I see these like second line text they usually follow this up by saying can only be added it at sorcery speed oh my gosh this card is broken at anytime it's great <laughs> it's so good and then yeah just being able to again we have those interaction pieces like the the flicker spells um so if i can do that on top of a win attempt i can if i've set it up uh correctly i can win over top of those yeah no i definitely feel that okay any other uh, that that makes sense man i love it like I, I love that you just open my eyes like if you all are not sold on the power of this deck i don't know what to tell you because i'm being sold at this point i already plan yeah. on brewing this up uh it's my uh only two color deck right now but the fact that i love winning at instant speed and that that sold me if i'm if, if you're sold on this drop sold on it in the chat because this is fire bro keep going man this is dope yeah. Yeah, I agree with uh, Old Ways Dre. Ruth, Ruthless Techno is goaded. It's such a good card. It's one of my favorites. It really is, man. Okay, man. So we're on clones. Any other clones you want yep. to talk on? Yes. Uh, I think the last four I want to talk about, we had we did speak a little bit about Spark Double and Auton Soldier already. So those are part of like the combo chains, but they're, they're great just to have as a non-legendary clone of something on the battlefield. Yeah. Uh, Spark Double um, in particular, only things that I control. So it can only be my stuff. So it can be a Gyruda, it won't go away. It could be Italian, it won't go away, which is really nice. Mm. You can get multiple Italians out there, which is really cool. Busted. Um, busted. <laughs> and then, yeah, again, Auton Soldier, great. The fact that it has Myriad on it is just insane. <sighs> Why? <laughs> Keep yeah. going, bro. I just, Myriad is such a slept on ability. Um, there's an artifact equipment that has Myriad and there's a mono white uh, commander. You know, the dragon commander that says when this creature dies, uh, you get to do one ability or another ability. Uh, it came out in Kamigawa, Neon Dynasty. Uh, uh, Owl the Don Sky? Yes, Owl, yes. There yeah. is a Owl pilot out there that kicks my tail all the time with the Owl the Don Sky deck. And one thing he does is he will equip Owl with the Myriad <laughs> and then straight up equip it, turn it sideways, and then Legendary Rule kicks off. You get two Owl triggers. You are seeing the top 14 card to your deck. Absolutely yeah, busted. And that is it, so busted. It, I'm gonna be honest. Myriad is is an ability that I feel like the CDH community has only scratched the surface of because it's another ability yeah. that we just see as casual. Oh, this is oh nah, like this is crazy. What's up, Bam? How you doing? How you doing? Hey, it's one of my buddies. <laughs> Let's go, Boozle. Um, yeah. Yeah, Myriad's broken. Autumn Soldier's great. I love the clones that came out in the Doctor Who set. Um, yeah. That that. Uh, that time of the year where Doctor Who and the Nixon came out really pushed this deck to the next level. I got the Roaming Throne and the Flesh Duplicate and Auton Soldier, and I was so happy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely you. Man, I was honestly, when this Flesh Duplicate came out, this was one of the decks that I thought about, like the two mana clones, and even with the Auton Soldier, I was like, man, I don't know what deck this is going to go in, but it's going to be cracked wherever it goes in. So I'm really happy they're still dropping cards that really just can make it these like cdh decks per man this is amazing keep going brother yep and then the last two clones we got both the sakashimas sakashima oh. the imposter mm -hmm. sakashima thousand paces um you thought sakashima was good with kark or timna <laughs> it's great with uh garuda because uh now all my clones get to stay whether they're legendary or not oh and then th that enables our beat strategy i'm guessing 
yes, yes, that's where the beat strategy comes from. The other Sakashima is great. Um, it doesn't enable the beat strategy, strategy as well as, as uh, Sakashima the Thousand Faces because this one enters as a Garuda, but its name is still Sakashima. Uh, the next clone that comes in, if you have it enter as either of those, that'll still die to Legend Rule. Gotcha. But it does have the nice clause at the bottom, pay two and, a, and two blue to return it to your hand. So it's repeatable clone effect if you need to be. 100%, because you can return it. Uh, well, no, this is the one that the uh, the Sisei decks run, and I always misread it. Uh, if you all are not familiar, Sakashima the Imposter says you may have Sakashima the Imposter into the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. A sepic's name is Sakashima the Imposter. It's a legend. It's a legendary in addition to other types, and it has pay two and two blue. Return this creature to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So it's not immediately, but you can, in response to the end step before your turn, pay the four mana, return it to your hand, and start the guy root a chain all over again on your next turn so that's yep. really really dope to be able to have that option yep and i've only had this happen once i do have a guild of drake in the deck um you can play the sakashima as a copy of the guild of drake and keep stealing people's creatures and then just pay the two blue in response to the ability and you get your sakashima back after you've stolen someone's creature oh um which is a nice little lock if people don't have a way to deal with it and if that ability it can only be used by the owner of the card not the controller mm -hmm. um it'll be the controller but you do it in response to the um etb trigger so you do have to have eight mana oh so it was but my it, understanding a, that the niche case yeah it was my understanding that actually the exchange does if the exchange doesn't happen the gildan drake sacrifices so talk to me how how does that this um this, this soft lock work so the exchange happens, right? But you activate the ability first oh, before the exchange. Oh, wait, you're fucking right. No, I just clicked. Go ahead. Yeah, say it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you have the Sakashima enter as a copy of the Guild of Drake. Uh, you, in response to the ETB, pay the two in a blue. And yeah. at the end of the turn, Sakashima the Apostle will return back to your hand. But you let the exchange happen. And then gotcha. when, when you go to the end of the turn, your Sakashima will return. You'll still have control of the creature that you took right yeah yeah i it's definitely nasty. yeah damn that's cracked they tried to make the card like non cracked by doing it at the beginning of the end step and they just opened the whole new line of creativity oh yeah. man any other clones you want to talk about brother i think that's it um i think dre had a, had a good point at up uh in the chat a little while ago i think he mentioned evil twin as an option i yes. probably should do that because i do have <laughs> i do have um just clone it's just mm. it just no special abilities it is just a regular old clone <laughs> right right um, right doesn't do anything special so i think having more utility clones like evil twin would be nice ah and this one being uh evil twin if you all are not familiar it is pay two and demir you may have evil twin in the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except it has pay a black and a blue tap destroy target creature with the same name as this creature so we talk about copying timnas cropping croms if you're playing against two to three blue farm decks you copy a crom at that point no one's crom is sticking anymore <laughs> and mm -hmm. who cares about swinging for four crom damage when you're their crom just doesn't exist anymore so you're the only one getting the advantage i definitely think this is a fun one to play test especially when like it's four mana it's just there oh that's a good one shout out to dre on this bro uh if i can also throw this out there dre is it uh dre asked if there's a guy rooted discord at this time is that a thing i haven't made one myself and i don't think that there's one out there um you oh. know maybe maybe when i get like a like a top four with gyruda i'll probably think about it but at the moment <laughs> i uh i don't i haven't started one i'll say this as a word of encouragement and as a challenge to a, a brother who's also into love and friends decks these unique deck unique decks that are the love of our hearts but take a little more effort and skill to, to get these top the shout out to the reunion community as of right now i've been the only pilot to top 16 in a major larger hunt over 100 person tournament there's been other players who have top of either one or top four to top 16 in their more of their locals i'm not gonna lie even though we are still working towards that tournament win with reunion fire dancer i love the community 
people are always talking people are always interacting people are always looking for new cards every new set is you get this hive mindset of people are like no we're letting this car go or new win strategies that the top pilots pilots like me or uh faded um just we just don't see them because there's only so much time one person has so i think if you we already got people in the chat right now that are 100 percent that would join the discord immediately and i know everyone on youtube once this post gets out there would love to support the the discord community so as a challenge to nivar if that is something you like to take on at least to start it off and you can do it however you like it i, I will really encourage you to do it because i know there's some, some real big enthusiasts out there that would love to join the support hell yeah uh I'm probably taking the list to Punt City 3, so if I do well there, I'll probably think about uh, starting Discord for it. 100%. All right. Y'all heard it here. Hold him to it. Y'all better <laughs> hold him to it. So when he wins the Punt City, y'all better be looking for that Discord community. All right, y'all? Okay. Uh, we got some, some last final chats before we uh, finish things off. We have... Uh, we have old Dre saying we need a guy read of Discord. Easily my favorite. Demir Commander. We have uh Dre old away. Dre also saying Nybar. I gotta get my list on Moxfield ASAP. We should brew. I play Garuda a lot in casual. Saw your list and immediately wanted to re, uh, rebuild it for CDH. And <laughs> that's awesome, old Dre. Thank yeah, Rio you said Rio your AK mono red Garuda. I agree. There's so many synergistic features that this deck is brewing. Uh, and using it really did remind me a lot of Rionia where it's like, yes, I know there's generic good red cards like Wheel of Fortune and Underworld Breach that I don't personally run in my mono red Rionia list. But in this list, though, uh, I love as well how you just running these crazy synergy pieces that it makes sense why it's, it's a logical reason why you're not running the just good stuff piles. And I absolutely love this. Um, I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Before, but before we let you go, we're going to get in some gameplay very soon after our small break. But before we let you go, I want you to talk to me right now. Yuriko is tearing it up as the best Demir deck right now. But right here, right now, in one sentence, why should we mess with Garuda over the the soon to be passed Ben Yuriko? Wait, you think Yuriko is the best Demir commander at the moment? Well, I will. Through the I, number, I'm not gonna lie. It, Italian it's, is it's, Italian technically is doing its thing, but Yuriko technically. I would, yeah, I would argue Italian is is pretty up there as well. But, um, just, it needs it needs to get some more stripes. It needs some more stripes. Yeah. As of right now, it's, it's still new. Uh, it's great. I do love it, especially because the stacks potential with the multiple Italians. But I have to give it technically to Yuriko because it's been, it's it's been around it's been around the block a few more times i gotta give it to yuriko not that i i think yuriko is worse but i feel like the deck has had more time to be honed and yeah, i think it's uh, still it still puts up results too i'll it, give it that and it, and it does put up results now yeah. get, let's let's talk in a year or two i want to talk again in a year or two because tally yeah. i love tally so much i'm not gonna lie but yeah. yeah but talk to us why why, why fuck tally and fucking yuriko why are we talking about it? garudo give it give us give us your closer real quick brother why Garuda? Oh, man. Garuda, look, you want to have fun in CEDH? You want to pretend like you're playing Kennen <laughs> or uh, or Winota, but you're in Demir and you're still on the best uh, two-card combo in the game, Thoughts Oracle and Tank Pact, right? Like Garuda. Yeah. You want to brag about winning with a six-mana commander like Tibbet does? Like Garuda. <laughs> I you wanna fucking love it. win with other people's cards? Just make clones of them. It's great. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. If you haven't been sold at this point, I don't know what it's going to sell you. But if, with that being said, I want to say thank you so much, Nybar. You are the man. You are the French enthusiast. And you are not even sometimes. You are that guy, Ruda guy. Um, we're about to get into some gameplay. But before I let you all go, thank you all for being an amazing audience. If you are looking for more ways to support the channel, we have the number one way, which is first, just simply liking, subscribing, and leave a comment down below. If you're on YouTube and if you're on Twitch, keep interacting. Shout out to Dre. Shout out to Embry. Shout out to I, I, uh, I'm I, always uh Stilton, shout out to Bam Boozler, shout out to all you all in the chat. Thank you all for interacting and being an amazing, an amazing audience. Thank you for the follow, brother. Uh, with that being said, 
I want to say if there's even deeper ways to support the channel, I got those too. First, we got a Patreon community. Gets you deeper access to talk to me, deeper levels in the, in the Discord. Come and join the Discord. It's an open Discord. But if you want deeper levels in the Discord, shout outs in the uh shout outs on every live stream and YouTube video, as well as ways to just get to talk to me more one-on-one. -on -one. I am a deck brewer and I love to learn and grow and get the opportunity to actually have your deck featured right here on the channel go ahead and join the patreon but if you say yo t i don't want no subscription i just want to say one time for the fun time i love what you do and want to support you go ahead and buy me a coffee it keeps me up and keeps the lights on but with that said y'all be great i'll see y'all very soon in the guy ruda gameplay peace <laughs>